Hello my beautiful creatives and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B and I'm a creativity coach hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Now what I have in front of me is an art canvas board. It's an 8x10 art canvas and I have something that I'm super excited to be doing today. Um, I just discovered something a couple of Fridays ago that happens in my local town and it is called Free Art Night Friday. And what that is, is artists from all over the community create a piece of art that they can then set around somewhere in the downtown area of my town and basically make it free to whomever finds it. So they kind of hide it a little bit. They kind of tuck it in places. And, and I discovered that a couple weeks ago when I stepped out of an art store that I was playing in that afternoon. And I discovered this little piece of art. And this piece of art was done by a woman named Misty Mendez who lives in my town and it says the earth hears or the earth has music for those who listen. I love this little piece so much. Um, I was so surprised to find it and there was a note on it that said something like if you found this it, you are you know congratulations you found this I'm free this is yours um, and I just felt like it was such an awesome I don't know a, an awesome way to put good juju out into the world. And so I picked up a few of these art canvas boards for myself and thought I would do a couple of um, art canvases that I could place out um, over the next few Fridays just to kind of participate. I feel like it's a good thing. It's a good thing to put out. I don't know. I'm just really excited about it. I think it'll be fun. I also think it's a great way to put good energy out into the world. I also think that I'll be able to put a message of some sort on my canvas that I can then share with whomever should find it. So whoever that recipient is, I feel like the universe will match the recipient to whom needs to hear this message. So I've already primed my canvas, even though I bought this canvas board pre-primed, I gesso it myself. One, to add texture, and two, I really like to know what type of gesso I'm is, is under my paints so that I know how it's gonna react because I don't know exactly what uh, manufacturers gesso their boards with. So I have a tendency to try to, to gesso anyways. And I'm just gonna go kind of willy-nilly, meaning I don't really have a plan, which if you followed my channel, you would know that's totally normal for me. Um, but I want to just put something out that I think um, someone would enjoy. Um, and also I really want um, sentiment on here that I feel like would be a positive something that can be in somebody's home. Plus, I have to tell you, when I found um, this piece of art, it completely overjoyed me to think about having actual artwork from another artist, like an original piece of art from another artist in my house. I think that is just so much fun. I'm just gonna start by putting down some paint colors. I'm not really sure what paint colors I'm gonna use, but I'm kinda of just going with my gut. I have Verdian Green Hue, Cerulean Blue Deep, uh, Cobalt Turquoise, and Manganese Blue Hue. Those are the ones that are just kinda of like right at the ready. Uh, I will probably add others because you know me, that's kinda of how I work. Just kinda, of, I play very um, organically. So I'm just gonna kind of just start and make a little bit of a abstracty kind of mess, which you know mama loves. And I'm gonna start with that Viridian green hue. Let's try some of the manganese blue hue. Actually, let's do the cerulean blue deep first because it's um, a little more translucent. Try the cobalt turquoise. I'm going to dry this a little bit and then see what I want to do next. Okay, so just because I can, I'm going to pull out my Golden's fluorescent green, which is a bright, bright, bright color. And I'm going to just do a little bit of finger painting. Um, just kind of rubbing some of that color around. I don't know, I've never used this color before, but I think some of that peeking through would be fun. 
I'm gonna make sure to get on the little edge, even though the edge is really kind of shallow. I'm just gonna do what I like to do. And I, know, I know this color is very bright, but I will tone it down as well. This is just a layer, remember? We do all this in layers. Okay, I'm gonna shoot that with a heat tool and let that dry a little bit, and then we'll get ready for the next layer. Now that's nice and dry, I'm coming to my paper stash, and I wanna pull out a couple of things just to add another layer. I'll pull out some graph paper. Probably one sheet will do it. I'll pull out some vintage book pages. Or let's see, how about some dictionary pages? I like that. We'll put some of that tissue paper down. And let's see, is there anything else that kind of floats my boat? I have a couple of random pieces of map here. I just want to, uh, I don't know, put some paper down. So now because I can, I pulled out some washi tapes and I thought I would add some washi. All of my washies are kind of like a charcoal, a deep brown color, there's some gold in there, there's a little bit of green, and some black. So I thought that'd be kind of a cool layer. Now remember, this is just a layer. It's not what the end product is gonna look like, but I think, I don't know, it's what I do, so I like it. Now that that is a nice juicy mess of paper and tape, I'm going to take my gesso and put a couple drops down and with a palette knife I'm going to basically tone everything down and push this layer back so that you get some of the texture but you don't necessarily get all of the texture. Now that that's covered the way that I like it, I'm gonna dry it and be right back. So I'm really loving the way this is coming out so far and I wanna put down some more color. Um, and I wanna go back to one of the colors I pulled, I had already used, which was the Cerulean Blue Deep. I'm gonna just finger paint that on because, I don't know, I just like doing that. I think it helps me feel in contact, like literally putting a little bit of myself into the art piece. I don't want to hide everything I've done up to this point. I just am using all of that as 
a layer. Let's wash my finger off so that the colors mix on the canvas but not on my finger before it hits the canvas. And I'm going to grab some green gold, which we haven't used yet today. Okay, I'm going to go to uh, a Target paint line, Handmade Modern, and it's called Satin Sailor Blue. I think this deep color will look really good on this. Okay, now I'm gonna hit this with a heat tool again to kind of dry this because I like the way it's going so far. Let me do one thing. I'm trying to keep all my fingerprints out even though I'm finger painting. Anywhere I see a fingerprint, I try to kind of rub it out. Because that's not the look I'm going for. So let's heat, dry this with a heat tool and I'll be right back. Okay, so because I can, I'm gonna pull out the golden indigo, which is a really, really, really dark color. So I'm going to use a paper plate to put that onto first. And I'm gonna do this in one drop increment because this is a very, very potent color, but I think that the deepness will be really kind of awesome. And just keep kind of blending it around, letting it blend however it wants with the other colors, meaning this is a very, even though it's a very deep color, it's a very translucent color. And I think that um, if you blend it enough, it will fade out and it will create other colors. I'm going to come in with some of the quinacridone nickel azel gold, which is my favorite. Love it so much. But this is also one of those colors that can be very potent, so I'm going to use a paper plate for that one as well. And this one I'm going to touch to my finger. And I'm going to come in all of these, um, I don't know, the base of the yellow, I guess. The yellowy green. Don't forget to get to the edge. Kind of bring that up into the blue as well. So it doesn't look like it's an afterthought. It was actually there on purpose. Because it kind of goes a little bit orangey. If you know your color wheel, you'll know that orange and blue are opposites. So they look well together. The one thing I'm trying to make sure I don't do is there's some of these white ghosty areas. I don't want to lose all of my white. I want to keep some of that in there. Just kind of like the light that it brings to the piece. And if you've noticed, I try to do all of my colors in threes. So if I put a color down and I don't like it, that's okay. I just make sure to still put it down in three different areas so it looks like it was purposeful and not a uh, holy hell type of mistake that sometimes happens. You've seen it sometimes happen on my channel. I'm gonna kind of just bring some more of this in because it kind of went really muddy. Muddy's good. I don't mind muddy on this. I also don't want it to be a perfect shape. I want it to be a messy shape. So let's kind of let that happen there. And I'm not sure what else to do, but um, while I'm contemplating that, I'm going to dry this layer so it stays just the way it is because I like it. It's very ethereal. Okay, so I love this. If it were mine in my house, I would just charcoal the edges and call it good because <laughs> I think it's so pretty. 
It's so, like, I don't know. I don't know. Painterly is what came to my mind, but I painted it, so I guess that is kind of stupid. Anyways, um, let's do some marks. And I don't know what kind of marks, but I have a feeling I want to do some of my dip pens. I also have a fountain pen that I've converted. I'm just not sure if it'll show on here, so we'll try that and see if that works. Otherwise, I'll just pull out my handy dandy um, acrylic ink. So that'll be awesome. I'll also pull out some of my doodling faves. Um, my black doodling pen, a white doodling pen, my um, Stabilo black pencil, also my construction pencil, and a number two pencil. Those are my favorite to kind of like zhuzh things up a little bit. So what do we want to do first? There's also a part of me that wants to pull up my umber and make some marks with a paintbrush using that. Yeah, so we'll try that with Adina Wakely Media. I think it's the number six pencil. I mean, six paintbrush. Pull out my palette again, my painter plate palette. Let's get some umber down. <laughs> Come in with my pencil and just do some quick grunging. Okay, so now let's go in with some ink. Just to avoid accidents, I'm going to set my ink on my little paper plate. And I have two different nibs here. Dip pens with two different nibs. One is really pointy and one has kind of like a little ball on the end of it. I'm going to use the one with the ball on the end first. And let's just do some little dots. So we tried it with the ink a couple times and then I decided, nope, I'm over that. So because my piece has gone so dark so quickly, I'm going to grab out a very small Punchinella, very, or Punchinella with very, very small holes, and I want to do some white. And I'm going to use um, the Target brand Handmade Modern. It's kind of a heavy body white which is why I like it. Just give it a shake and I use whatever is up in the cap. And let's just do some of this. I think my issue is I'm doing this out of like the normal order I normally do things in. Ooh, that's bad, I don't like that. Let's try that again. I'm really struggling today, I'm not sure why. Got myself a little bit funk all of a sudden. So I'm going to wash that off, I'm going to go take a quick break, I'm going to grab myself a cup of tea, wash my hands, and I'll be back to try it again. Now, the reason the baby wipe works is because um, everything underneath it's already dry. And I use everything, everything I use is permanent. So that's how come the baby wipe technique works. Now that's cleaned off again, and let's go take a break and I'll be right back. Okay, break is done. I feel much better. I actually just went and did dishes and in my world dishes is done, done by hand. So I get to even spend some time at the sink watching the girls play while I got my dishes done, which meant my hands got washed, which was awesome. And I realize I'm overthinking this. I have a tendency to do that sometimes, as you might be aware. So I'm going to stop 
And I'm going to grab what a couple of uniball paint pens. And I'm going to start with what? My self tells me to start with green. And just do some marks. And let's grab the blue. And do the same thing with the blue, just to overlap. Okay, now come back in with the white. set this aside for a minute, I think, and get my words ready. And to do that, I'm just going to pull out a pad of watercolor paper. And I'm going to pull one piece out of said pad. This is just a Canson watercolor pad of paper, 9 by 12. Um, it's 140 pounds, but I will not be using this whole paper. The way that I generally like to use it is I like to stamp along the bottom and then cut my way up. And I think I'm going to write you are enough. I'm going to do that using both stamps. I was going to use Amy Tangerine or the Inca Dinka Do. And I decided to use both. So I'm going to write enough first because enough is going to be in all caps on the larger set and the you are are going to be in the smaller. You've seen me do this a thousand times before. I'm not sure if I'm going to how much of some have you watched, but I'm using an archival ink pad in jet black. Okay, now that I've got my words printed out or stamped out, I'm going to cut them out. Okay, now I just need to decide like where I want to put these. You are enough. It feels like it's just missing something. Circle, of course, because circle's what I do. I'm going to take my Stabilo pencil. You know, I always do better if I just listen to my gut. Like that. I must dry these thoroughly so I don't mix my paints. Stabilo, please. kind of darkened it back up again, which I like. Now I feel like I'm ready to do my polka dots. Now that I've gotten all my little polka dots done, I really want to do some lines. So I'm pulling out my finer dip pen and I'm just going to do some little stripes on the side here. What other marks can we make? Let's do some little X's. where I'm going to put this little sentiment you are enough. Just going to grab my Aliens Fast Grab Tacky Glue and put that down. Okay, I think while I'm letting that dry, I'm going to take my Stabilo pencil and I'm just going to edge the whole 
outside here to give it kind of a, oops, if I can, to give it a frame. I'm also gonna do the same thing to the edge. Okay, I'm just gonna take a break. I'm gonna weight this down just a little bit so it will dry completely flat and I'll be back in just a few minutes. So that is dry. The only thing I did off camera was I added my signature to it. And before I go, I'm going to do my messy scribble around the URMF. And I think this is ready to go for free art night Friday. I'm excited about that. I hope that whoever gets this likes it. Okay, well that makes me happy. So there you have it. It's my art canvas for free art night Fridays. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit of a long one, but um, yeah, it's only once a week, so I think thought it'd be okay. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know if you like this type of video or not, so I'll know to keep doing it, um, this type of video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'm super jazzed to be able to help you whenever I can. And until next time, bye for now.